What you see is largely what you get with a VRS wheel. If you like the way it looks, then great. But if you don't like the way it looks, then there's probably nothing about it that's going to grab you. Apart from one thing, one invisible attribute that gives this wheel a specific type of appeal to a specific type of person, and it's this, three year warranty. I know, wow, exhilarating. But a three year warranty is long, longer than most, and it gives this wheel an actual identity. For a touch under 550 quid, it's plain, it's simple, it's not very flashy, but it appears to be built to last, and at least your money should be pretty safe if it doesn't. This 1300 quid cube controls wheel, two year warranty. This 875 quid Symagic wheel, two year warranty. This 780 quid Simi Cube wheel, two year warranty. 650 quid Moser FSR, one year warranty. 300 quid Symagic GT Neo, one year warranty. You get the picture. That three year guarantee makes this a strong choice for those who place reliability and dependability above all other factors. And good thing too, because in most other respects, it's just an ordinary wheel. Let me run you through it. As with all my hardware videos, the kit has been provided free for review by VRS and I am an affiliate partner with them. That means that if you proceed to buy anything from VRS, you'll find an affiliate link in the description which will get you 5% off at checkout. Using that link to purchase helps support me at no added cost to you, but please watch the whole video through before making any decisions. If you can't already tell, I still tell you exactly what I think in pursuit of a fair and level-headed review. VRS have left me alone to do just that, but thanks to them for making this video possible. So it's all packaged quite nicely, it is presented with a sense of care and pride, and you are at least made to feel like you're unpacking something the company is themselves proud to put forward. Taking it in your hand, the wheel feels pretty solid, dense and well constructed. The grips are very comfortably shaped and distinctly tacky to touch, which is encouraging as I'd personally rather drive without gloves if I could help it, it helps with staying cool. The shifters are a bit too clacky and noisy for my liking, but they do activate very clearly thanks to the ancient mystical power of magnets. I imagine I'll be able to do something about the noise, more on that later. Some very smooth dual clutch paddles finish off the array to the rear. The buttons and dials are quite plain due to the lack of any lighting or details, but the satin finish to them helps elevate them beyond the ordinary. The thumb dials and rotary switches are finished nicely with the same subtle finish, and I'll grant this, everything on this wheel feels very robust and dependable. I do trust it to survive. Finally, there's a coiled cable for connection to the PC that screws into the back of the wheel, and from there you would connect it to a USB extension near the base of your wheel. It's advised to use the supplied Velcro strap to secure the cable to the shaft and given the minimal clearance when you just have the plain hub between the wheel and the VRS wheelbase for example, I can see why there has been at least one person whose cable is broken. VRS support put him right quickly but be aware of this. You can add more clearance to the setup with a spacer or a quick release system but it's a bit of an oversight for those who, like me, just have the standard hub. However, this cable is not mandatory. The VRS wheel does have Bluetooth connectivity built in, so you can use this totally wire-free, which I'll touch on later. To mount this wheel to your wheelbase of choice, you will just need a hub or quick release. Here I'm using VRS's standard hub. Three screws go through the center of the wheel and make contact with the threads on the other side. The fitment follows the universal 70mm mounting pattern found in almost every hub and quick release. So if you wanted to add a quick release here, then you can choose any standard system that follows that 70mm pattern. Once connected via cable or Bluetooth, the wheel can be configured using VRS's Direct Force Config tool. It's very straightforward and the settings are saved to the device, meaning you don't need to have it running all the time. This is where you would change things such as clutch bike points, the behavior of the rotary encoders, anything that can be changed would be changed here. Driving the VRS Formula wheel, the first thing you're probably going to feel is the urge to silence the shifters. They do clack fairly loudly due to the metal on metal contact. Some people love this, I personally do not. This is fixable, more on that shortly. Shifters aside, I do quickly start to appreciate what the wheel does have. I do like the general form and ergonomics of the wheel. The grips are nice and sticky and shaped well. The tack factor here is great, so you should have rock solid control even with bare hands. I've been able to run the majority of races without gloves, however they are nonetheless smooth and untextured. So if you do start to get a bit hot and sweaty with high force feedback and high excitement races, you might want gloves nearby.
This will vary from person to person, but for perspective, the grip and comfort level of these handles is much higher than the Symagic GT Neo I just reviewed. Being a 287mm wheel, it's a mite smaller than what I'd usually prefer, but I've gotten on with it pretty well, and the extra responsiveness has actually been pretty useful for catching those snappy moments that might have been harder to work on my usual 300mm and even 330mm wheels. You do get a feeling of solidness, buttons have a distinct pop, and all the dials feel tight, it's easy to reach them all, and there's no distinct mistake in the layout, it's all very standard. But if you're someone that's drawn to VRS because of that 3 year warranty, then it helps that the equipment feels like you're never really going to need it. So the Bluetooth connectivity. There's an onboard rechargeable battery in this wheel that can power the wheel independently for use via Bluetooth, but in order to use this wheel wirelessly, you'll need to have a Bluetooth receiver on your PC, either built into the motherboard or with a dongle. Bluetooth dongles cost around a tenner. Point is, you don't get a dongle or receiver included, so you'll have to sort that stuff out yourself. I've got a TP-Link Bluetooth dongle, cost a tenner, plugged into the USB lead that's strapped to the rig, and although I was very wary and skeptical of using this wheel via Bluetooth in my early review of the VRS base, I had to give it an actual serious try in this wheel-focused review. I wasn't happy to just shake my fist at the clouds here, I needed to at least try it considering it is an important feature. After testing for quite some time, running just with the Bluetooth connection to the PC, completely wirelessly, my prior prejudices do feel a little bit harsh. It's been fine. There's a detectable micro delay to the inputs, which is historically an issue with Bluetooth, but it's small enough to be virtually imperceptible to me for gear shifts and button presses. It causes no trouble. Cable is always best, but being cable free is nice. If it continues to be virtually problem free, then I won't mind just carrying on with it. So let's see what I can do about the two things that I take issue with on this wheel, and that's the loud shifters, as previously mentioned, but also the lack of labels. Shifter noise can be resolved with strategically placed rubber pads. I asked VRS if doing this puts that three year warranty at risk, and they said no, so that's good news. I used one millimeter thick adhesive backed rubber sheets and placed sections along the contact points. The end result is a much quieter and much less resonating shifter click. Labels will be easy enough to fix, I've got some to hand from previous stuff that I can add for now. Not perfect, but it illustrates that a little bit of personalization gives this plain looking wheel something to add interest. VRS likely thought that the red and silver buttons would have done that by themselves, but buttons without a clear purpose just look incomplete, the eye can tell. It would have cost a measly sum to include stickers. So to VRS and everyone else who makes this mistake, stop making this mistake. Give your customers some labels. They will appreciate it. To wrap things up, it's a pretty simple wheel. What you see is what you get, but it's backed up by a decent warranty. And there is a segment of customers out there who take great comfort in buying things built to last. And that three year guarantee, which actually applies to all of VRS's stuff, is music to those people's ears, even if the wheel isn't fine art. To point out the obvious, I've only had this wheel in my possession for less than two months, so there's been little chance for anything to go wrong, but that's where you come in. If you own one, is this wheel as hardy as it thinks it is? And what's it like in general? What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below and you'll be so welcome and it will help out people who follow you and view this video to no end. There probably won't be many wheels that go wrong because there isn't much to go wrong, and even if it does, VRS's customer service is well regarded. This is just a safe pair of hands for those with safe pairs of hands on the sim. And thanks for watching, I hope this was entertaining. Feel free to leave a comment or question and I'll take a look. Cheers again.